came across some old stuff in one of the barns. I need someone I trust. Someone I know. I know you're scared. territory as far as like your first feature in a place that you grew up in so yes. tell me about sort of I mean because not a lot of people have seen the movie um, tell me about what it's about and why you chose to go back to sort of your home landscape to set it yeah well um you know, people write about what they know, and in the story isn't autobiographical, but it's based on some experiences I had uh, doing field biochemistry there uh, that really sparked my imagination and a story that was kind of haunting me and, and, and staying with me for a long time. So it's mm -hmm. something that I wanted to explore. So Runoff is uh, a thriller that creeps up on you, mm -hmm. and um, things happen in it that you aren't expecting. Yeah. I hear that from a lot of people who are like, I think it's going to go this way, and then it does this. I thought and I was watching like a domestic drama, and then I'm like, what? Yeah, it's good though. It's great yeah. for that to happen. Yeah, I, yeah. so it, it sneaks up on you, and it, and it takes you into unexpected places. So we shot the film on working farms in rural Kentucky, mm -hmm. and um, but the film is set in this place where there's a pastoral beauty, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's this bucolic sense you have from, from the space. Uh, but just beneath the surface, you really get a feel for the brutality of the farm town. Mm -hmm. And that there's danger, and that there's something percolating beneath the mm -hmm. surface that's going to come to a head. Well, I really like that the film sort of explores this idea of decision making, because I think as artists, um, life is chaos. And everything is affected by the decisions you make, by what projects you do, by what stories you tell, by what people you work with. Um, so was that something that you were kind of coming at the story from a personal place going, I want to explore the process of a human making a decision? Because you've said that animals don't have the ability to do that and foresee the future. So tell me about sort of why that's at the meat of the story. Yeah, you know, one of the, one of the themes, there are a lot of themes kind of explored in the film, but one of the things that I, after doing this kind of field biochemistry work, that I became obsessed with was this the unique way that as human beings we make decisions. So the idea that as, as people we make decisions in a temporal way. Mm -hmm. So that we have the, dis, the, the ability in our decision making process to think about how our choices are gonna play out over time. You know, is this the best decision for right now? Mm -hmm. Is it the best decision for 10 minutes from now, 15 years from now? or maybe some distant time when I'm not gonna be here anymore. Mm -hmm. And that really got me thinking about the concept of how wide we draw the circle around ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is this the right decision for me? Is this the right decision for my family, for my community, mm -hmm. or for people whose path I'm never gonna cross? Mm -hmm. So we have this, this, you know, incredibly strong, determined woman, Betty, at the center of the story, mm -hmm who is facing these impossible choices and she draws a very tight circle around herself. Tell me about the people that you um, worked with to get funding. I know you had it from a few different places. Yeah, you know, like any independent filmmaker, we did uh, we did a Kickstarter campaign, which was successful, and that is always helpful, you know, not to just kind of get the ball rolling and get a kind of nest egg, but also to get some visibility for the project and also attract awareness to, you know, of people who have no idea about you. You know, we have people who, fought, you know, became partners with us on the Kickstarter who are still a part of our, our team now, and these are people I've never met before. So there's something very um, special and gratifying about having connection to people who you wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, you then, worked with the state of Kentucky, right? We, do, we did, we did. So we had the, you know, we raised money in different ways for the mm -hmm. film. Uh, most of the money came out of the state of Kentucky um, and came out of, you know, from, awesome. from individuals there. There was a real just, amazing coming forth of support mm -hmm. 
uh, for, for me as a filmmaker, for the story, and to get Kentucky on screen from individuals in, uh, in Kentucky. And that, again, was just to feel that kind of love and support is amazing. Um, well, and as you were saying earlier, you live in Brooklyn, and um, you know, you've also got a family there, people willing to support you. So tell me about sort of the collaborators that uh, you sort of, you know, circle yourself with. Yeah, I mean, we're in a, you know, it's all the, the indie filmmakers in New York can probably say, you know, it's a very, very special place where you can find incredible people to collaborate with. And, um, you know, I, I think I was telling you before, just as an example, uh, Paul Shu, who did the sound mix for us and was, you know, such a huge help in the sound design and, and just finding ways for us on our budget to make the most complex an interesting soundscape that we could because that was something very important to me in the film. Yeah, it is important. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the, the farm settings, you know, when I first saw the footage, they're amazing visuals, but, you know, after you've been in a location like that where it's not just about the visuals, it's about the smell, it's about the fear that you sense, it's about the claustrophobia of the space and about what it's like to be in a pen with 3,000 hogs who are quadruple your body weight. It's a very, it's a very, you know, specific thing. Mm -hmm. And I realized after seeing the footage that all of the other things that you sense from being in that space, we had to make up for with sound, right? We had to fill in with sound. So I reached out through a friend to Paul Shu, and you know, he, he's working on major, major films. Yeah. And, uh, but takes, Foxcatcher. Yeah, he was so, small yeah, but, you know, he was finishing yeah. Foxcatcher's mix right before ours. And, uh, and, and he's just, Regardless of his level of success in the, in the industry, he has maintained a kind of um, artistry and sense of, of collaboration and, and desire to collaborate with artists, regardless of your budget. Mm -hmm. And he said, send me the film. If I'm into it, we'll do it. And that's, I mean, it was really as simple as that. So I was very fortunate to have partners like Paul uh, in making the entire vision for the film come together.